This is the editor, Sean Stanley. This is the first time he's ever edited anything. This is <laughs> Uh, one of the one of the directors of photography, Andrew McDonald. Where's Johnny Flair? Get up here. Co-producer Matt Thomas. <laughs> and executive producer Sal Bashir is in the audience. Get up here, dude. We got time for questions or comments that you want to share, so feel free to raise your hand and uh, we'll get them. Any of the parties on stage. Or is personal anybody, recollections. Is anybody here in the audience that was actually there then? Great right. first question. Anybody want to share with them? We're at the Continental. Personal anecdotes, welcome. The dirtier the better. <laughs> The audience, no, there isn't. Where, where's Bette Midler in all of this? Why wasn't so, she? I'm going to repeat questions so that Belkin can hear, yeah. but questions regarding uh, Bette Midler. Why wasn't she in that? We asked, we, you know, I, I tried several different uh, ways to get to her, and ultimately the answer I got back was that she was busy. Um, I, I think that, it, you know, Michael Musto says it best. I, I think it's something she's left behind. Um, I'm really appreciative of the fact that, like, she's definitely part of the story, but she's not the story. And I think that my instincts tell me if I had talked to Bette Midler, especially early on, I think the movie would have focused a lot, there would have been a lot more Bette Midler, and it wouldn't have given me the chance to kind of focus on Steve Ostra, who I think is the real story of the Continental. So it kind of worked out. But we, we tried, and essentially, like, you know, I, I pushed and pushed and pushed, and it, it was obvious that she just didn't want to talk about it. Other questions? Go on right here. The challenge of doing the movie like 35 years after the fact. Yeah, so I mean, the, uh, sorry, I gotta repeat. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. It's the echo effect. So, uh, can you talk a bit about the challenges of doing a film about something that took place 35 years ago? Well, and ex ex especially something as kind of underground as a gay bath, the, the limitation of footage. Because yeah. it essentially, it, it would just, it would have been amazing if that. If that's like, what happened to the Continental Baths, that whole area, has been completely gutted and turned into a parking garage. So there isn't even a little vestige of what it used to be. Um, and I had to be like, do I show that? Do I be like, well, this is where it was. It's just like, no, it's better to kind of keep it in your mind and things. But I mean, I, I just wish there was a lot more pictures and that kind of thing. That was a real struggle. Because, I mean, I, you know, you have the people talking about it and creating this kind of picture, but it just, it would have been great to have a lot more pictures, but because of the nature of what it was, there really wasn't people going around taking photos. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's interesting that you resist what a lot of documentary filmmakers are go-to in terms of reenactment. Um, you kind of stay away from trying to create any of those visuals, allowing us to do it entirely on our own. I mean, the only guy who could pull that off is Earl Morris, and I fucking ain't there for <laughs> You know what I mean? I wish I was, but I mean, yeah, I, 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 I think that if you do reenactments, it could look really bad. So I try and stay <laughs> So where did you get the we, I mean, we dealt with the New York archives online. I mean, we, people were kind of cool and open up, but it was, it was just tracking stuff down. Which really, even the New York archives doesn't have much, the gay archives. So it was really, I mean, it, it, there was a lot of investigative work, but ultimately, I mean, there's just not that much out there. So. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, yeah, I wonder whether uh, you had any of the sound uh, clips uh, saved or had access to them, because when I was in graduate school, it was in 1970, at 2 o'clock in the morning when I was in the lab, they used to, they used to play music from, at, from the performers at the Continental Lab at about 1.32 a.m. It was recorded and broadcast in Toronto, probably on, I think it was on, on one of the radio stations. Did you, did you have access to any of those recordings? Steve, As Steve Ostro did actually have a radio show. Like, he, he was, he had, he just had a bunch, bunch of things. I didn't have access. I mean, I have audio of Laura Kenyon performing that she gave to me. And of course, there's the, you know, the opera, that, <laughs> which was just such a bizarre, the Eleanor Serbia thing. But I, I know, I, I didn't have access to any of that stuff. Yeah, go ahead. I'm just curious if uh, when you started this, was it 
was Steve Austro the focus, or was it the front end level that he sort of flourished once you started? In the, sorry, Echo. <laughs> Questions regarding uh, when you started this, was it about, did you know about Steve Ostro as much as, you know, comes across, or was it strictly going to be about the continental? No, I mean, because my access point was, that, like, I was just like Ben Midler. I was like, because that's how I first heard about the continental bass. And, and my initial thing was just like, if I don't get Ben Midler to talk, then it's no use making this documentary. She's obviously the most important person. And then, it, it's interesting, because I, I, and then I went and I did a Kickstarter campaign to get myself, because, you know, Steve right now, he just had his 80th birthday, Steve Ostro. And my, my thing was, like, I had to go and tell and capture that story, um, you know, while he was still around and still able to tell it. And so it was like, that's the first thing I did. I kind of wanted to get that banked. And then, um, after talking to him, it was just like, oh my god, this is a really incredible man with a really incredible story. And he was just, I mean, the way he was ready to tell the story, it was just such a fascinating story to be told. And it was really kind of sad at the end of it all. He asked me, he was just like, if Bet doesn't do it, are you still going to make the documentary? And I was just kind of like, yeah, I'll, you know, I'm going to make this documentary. And then, um, I plan to just kind of bank the footage and just kind of go on and, and you know, raise a bunch more money because documentaries are expensive. And just kind of, I, I, I was going to go out, but once the move, once I had Steve Ostro's interview in the can, he's just like, well, where's the documentary? And he would be kind of like, well, wait a minute, like, you know, are we making a documentary or what? So I was just kind of, so he basically was my motivation to go out there and do it far earlier than I normally would have with the resources I had. So my motivation was to actually make it for him to see kind of like, you know, because there's a lot of people he hasn't seen, he's not allowed back in the United States for a variety of reasons. <laughs> I mean, he's a very interesting guy. Uh, you know. But um, it, it, it was just really, for him and trust me with his story, I wanted to give him the get back of seeing, you know, all of these people talking about him and all that kind of thing. So, it, and fortunately, he kind of, he got to launch it and, um, and we're actually going to have a screening of it in Sydney in uh, August. And he can't travel right now, so I mean, it's, it's going to be the one chance for him to see it with an audience. So I'm really excited about that. Wow. Go ahead. Questions. I heard that Barry Manilow, um, did you approach him at all with any of this? But Barry Manilow came up now. Uh, I mean, my second question is that I heard that Melissa Manchester is part of the back uh, backup singers. Is that any? Yeah, Melissa Manchester performed there. As for Barry Manilow, the thing about Barry Manilow, I, he's not a place where he's talking. You know, he, he, I, I just I, I felt that it it, it just it, it, Barry Manilow is not ready to talk about the continental battles. <laughs> That's what I'll say. It's just like there's no point until Barry Mendel is ready to talk about the Continental Baths. There's nothing really to talk about, right? I mean, it would just be a guy talking about feelings, like, evasive and talking about things. So it, it just it, and once Bette Midler said no, I know that she kind of because Steve Oster tried to get a quote for he wrote a book and he tried to get a quote from Bette and Barry Mendel was like, I'll do it if Bette does. So Barry is Bette's bitch. <laughs> it's a tassiest yes, legend. <laughs> Other questions? I got one. Steve Austro's book called? It's called An Evening of the Bats. And then you, you wrote An Evening of the Bats, and like, you can find it on uh, Amazon. We have time for a couple more questions. Am I missing anything in the belt? There's Not a second half. Holly Woodlawn. She still. Hollywood Lawn. Yeah. I mean, she's still cooking. She was a. She was really. She's a real trooper. She's actually. Yeah. Um, she's. She's. She has cancer, and that's why she's kind of in that kind of shape. The most wonderful. I don't know if people noticed it. I, I, I wish there was some way I could show it. What she's wearing is a towel with a brooch, and a lot of people didn't notice that. That that's what she was doing. But I just thought, like, she was so lovely. I mean, I'm such a huge fan of Hollywood, and getting, getting a chance to meet her was so incredible. But she has, her life has kind of taken some horrible turns health-wise, and still she really wanted to kind of be a part of the story, and I couldn't thank her enough. She was a real trooper. That interview was very difficult for her to do. She was a lot of discomfort doing it, but she wanted to do it for Steve and for that story. So it was wonderful. Like, to get a chance to sit and talk with her was incredible. 
I'd love to meet her. She's in New York? No, she's in Los Angeles. Oh. She's not hard to track down. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't say that. <laughs> But, I mean, you, 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 I mean, you could find her through traditional channels. Okay. And actually, she likes, she loves company. Far back, go ahead. What are you talking for? Like, what am I doing? Like, so, the question, if I heard it right, was what's Steve Ostro's relationship like with his children? Very odd. <laughs> um, it, 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 I don't think, like, it's just, I didn't dig that deep into it. His son would have talked to us, but that, to talk to his son, it would have kind of taken us out of the air, and it just would have been, it, it, it would have been too tangential to the story. And he never talked about, mentioned, or anything his daughter. It, it just, and, you know, essentially, I didn't push, want to push anywhere. But, I mean, it just seemed like it was, you know, he, he, I mean, he's led a, a very, very odd and incredible life, and I think that, I, I, I would be only speculating. He is still his relationship with his son, I, I'm not sure what's going on. Time for a final question. Go ahead. This may be one you can't answer, but okay. But why isn't he allowed back in the state? So the question is regarding why Steve Ostro can't return to the state yet. I mean, take your pick. I mean, he. I, I, there's taxes, I know. Um, which he's open. I mean, he's open, but there, 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 like, there's a tax thing. Last time he came was for his his, his wife's funeral, and he was basically held, and it was a big thing. He escaped the the, the country. And he, so he'll never come back. <laughs> hell? Sorry? He was hell? Yeah, I mean, he was, because, because of, like, he, he, like he, 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 he got arrested, and then he was held, and then he was let out, and then he, he fled the country, he got out. I don't know much more of the story, I mean, I, I know that's a lot to say without actually having filling the details, and, but I know that, like, essentially something happened when he came for his wife, it was some incredibly long story, and Ultimately, uh, it basically came and he had to kind of flee and, and go back to Australia and he'll, he can never come back to America. But he can't come back to America. But I mean, he's, he, he's, and, and, and he's 80, 80 years old and very poor health, so he can't move fly anywhere. You look kind of, I didn't answer that at all, but you did I? Sorry? I'm a, bit, I'm a bit surprised. Surprised by what? That he'd be like restricted that way. That him? No. I mean, the IRS. <laughs> the state would be happy to have him if they pay back every penny. Yeah, I mean, the state, exactly. I mean, they're happy to have him, but he, like, it's a tax thing, right? He just has to pay states till recently. He didn't go into the hotel. I mean, essentially, because the area of the, the Ansoni that the place was is gone. So essentially, like, to just go in, and, it's all, it's apartment building. Like, Natalie Portman lives in there. Like has a place. So it's basically turned into something completely different than it was. So to actually represent it, it just I would have been filming, you know, something that it really wasn't. Natalie Portman's condo. Yes. That's a different story. Um, thank you. Okay, quick, quick, I'll squeeze it in. It would be fabulous if you would Skype an interview though, if you were at a screening, you could have a seat. And he would love to. That man loves to talk. Like he, you know, it would be amazing. I would, I would love to. You know, he's such an incredible storyteller. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you all. And a couple of things. Your ticket is your pal. Go on your way out. Show this film some love as well. We need to clean this theater as quickly and as efficiently as possible, as we have another film coming in. Thanks so much. But don't let us stop you from voting. Yeah, absolutely not. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank you.